Hey everyone, welcome back, Force here, and today we're going to be diving in and taking a closer look at Evil Dead the game. This is an asymmetrical multiplayer horror game that pits four survivors against one demon. The title draws inspiration from the likes of Dead by Daylight, but unlike that and many other modern day asymmetrical horror titles, the demon isn't some impossibly difficult threat that the survivors need to constantly run and hide from. Instead, they're more of an overseer, almost like a dungeon master, attempting to set up situations that disrupt and prevent their survivors from completing their objectives. While on the other hand, their survivors are actively moving around, looting, and engaging in combat, constantly fighting back the deadite hordes. And in some ways, the game also has similarities with something like Left 4 Dead. There's a really active, like, survival combat focus of the survivor side of this asymmetrical horror title. I've dove in and researched just about everything we know about the game, and I want to let you know what you should know before you jump in and check it out. Okay, so let's just start off with the simple nature of what the game is and what a match is going to look like. So it starts off with the team of four survivor players spawning in at some location on the map. Now what's really cool is that the map seems to be quite massive. By all reports and hands-on tests, all sorts of different locations and points of interest that you'll be going to or spawning at or having to collect objectives from. So they spawn in and they begin by collecting loot. Uh, there's melee and range weapons to find, ammo and consumables, but also some useful items like matchsticks, which can be used to light campfires, or pink F, which is this resource that's used to upgrade your skills, making you stronger. Now, the first objective beyond collecting loot for these survivors is to collect three map pieces. These will be scattered about in different locations. You'll have to search for them while you're doing your other looting, and you may even need to hop into a vehicle to get from one spot to the next, because as I mentioned, the map is quite big, and these pieces aren't just going to be spawning right on top of you. Now, while you're searching and looting and doing all of this, deadites will start appearing in relatively small numbers. They'll be fairly manageable at this stage for whatever items you've collected, but they will still need to be fought in order to keep looting. You really can't just ignore them. So once the survivors find all three pieces of the map, they are then given the locations and must find the Necronomicon pages and the Kendarian dagger. So these will be a bit harder to acquire. First of all, they're going to be spread out and off in different locations. And and they're going to require a lot more interactions and dealing with the deadite. The number and difficulty of enemies are really going to start ramping up at this point and then really becoming a significant danger. But also, in order to collect these items, you basically have to conduct a ritual. So this is sort of like a wave defense. You stand in the circle and wait until the timer completes before you can actually collect the item. And things really, really ramp up and get very tough here. Should you complete both of those, you have the book, you have the dagger. The game then moves into its final phase. A Storm also forms at this location, kind of shrinking the play space, sort of similar to what we see in Battle Royales, but the play space is shrinking to a specific location, and that is of the Dark Ones. You have to use the Kandarian Dagger to banish the Dark Ones, and then in doing so, the Necronomicon will appear, and you have to prevent it from being destroyed by the Deadites and the Demon Player. Things are going to be as hard as they will ever get here. The Demon Player will be at their maximum strength, and they're going to have a lot of power and be throwing everything out at you, but then also you're in a small spot because of that shrinking storm and enemies are constantly spawning in. I mean, this is where things really get crazy in the game. Now, should the survivors survive and protect the book, they will then win the match. But that was just from the perspective of the survivors. Don't forget there's also a demon perspective that's thrown into a mix and another player playing as that demon. So the demon, as I mentioned, kind of acts like a dungeon master. They will directly influence the events on the map and try to disrupt the survivors and prevent them from completing their tasks. So they actually start off by flying around, sort of in this ghost form, looking for the survivors, but also collecting these orbs, which are used as a resource to let them do all sorts of things. The demon player can lay traps. They can lay scare traps that will scare players walking close to them. They can also place traps in loot containers. So when a player tries to go and get a piece of gear in a chest, instead they're going to have like uh, mini ashes jump up on them, which will also raise their fear level. And Fear plays a big role in this game, and we'll touch on why in a short while. Uh, the demon player can summon enemies. There are three varieties, basic, elites, and bosses, with the higher tier enemies being much stronger, but costing more resource to summon. They can also possess objects, so they can possess trees and animate them to attack, or they can possess vehicles and drive them into players, or drive them away from the players if they're needing the vehicle at the time. They can also possess the deadites that are summoned in, so each deadite that comes in that the survivor 
players are attacking, the demon player can actually take direct control of them and they have their own unique attacks and skills. And so depending on the one that you summon, it's gonna uh, have a different effect on the players you're attacking against. The demon player can also do these jump scares, which are gonna instantly raise the fear level of survivors. And should their fear level get high enough, and this is why fear is a plays a vital role in this whole experience, if a survivor's player fear raises to a certain threshold, the demon player can then possess that player, gaining direct control of them for a brief time, and they can use them to attack their own teammates or run them into a trap or into some dangerous enemies. Or you could possess a healer and separate them from their team when they really need heals. There's all sorts of crazy stuff and, uh, and, and really ways they could disrupt the survivors through this possession mechanic. Now, as the match progresses, the threat level raises and things get much more hectic for the survivors, which give the demon player a lot of opportunities to capitalize. The demon player levels up actually and gets stronger just by engaging directly with the survivor. So as a demon player, you're not going to want to just hide and collect orbs and set up traps. You want to be constantly interacting with the survivors because that's how you raise your level, unlocking stronger capabilities. And also during those collection events that we talked about when the survivors are picking up the Necronomicon pages and the Kandarian dagger, the demon player's energy recharges much more quickly, letting them essentially freely cast their summons, their traps, and do possessions. And until that event is over. So a lot of pivotal opportunities for the demon player to really, really try to mess things up and try to secure victory for themselves. Now, on average, matches of this game will last about 20 to 30 minutes and either end by the survivors dying, running out of time, or if they're successful, banishing the Dark Ones and protecting the book. So now I wanna talk a little bit more about the survivors and the demons, specifically in terms of what can you play and what are their capabilities. So the game's launching with 13 different survivors to choose from, and these are broken up into four separate categories. There is the leader category. These focus on buffing characters around them, giving things like fear resistance, damage resistance, damage boost, and these will be really great if your team plans to stick together as a full group. Having leaders obviously can be very helpful. The warrior category are tanky characters that also focus on dealing extra melee damage and gaining bonuses from being in the thick of battle. Hunter characters will excel at range combat, dealing bonus damage at range, and carrying more ammunition. And then support characters are all about healing and shielding allies whenever they do so themselves. And they'll also carry extra consumables and provide buffs to the squad. Now, every individual survivor also has their own unique active ability as well as perks that play into their roles. And they've got all sorts of different progression beyond their active skills that can really just fit to your play style within their particular role. So those are the survivors. Let's now move on to the demons. Now, demons are broken up into three categories but it's not individually selectable playable characters because like I mentioned, the demons are sort of like a dungeon master. They can possess characters, but they are not playing as a character themselves. So the three different categories for demon players is the warlord category. This one has buffs to normal deadites, improving their damage and defenses, and also includes the boss summon Henrietta, a very tanky boss that lays toxic gas, AOE attacks, and can incapacitate survivors. The puppeteer category focuses primarily on possession, summons up the boss Ellie Ghost, which is kind of like a glass cannon. It's invisible while moving, but has things like this AOE burst immobilize. And then there is the Necromancer class. This one is focusing on summoning hordes of skeletons. They've got special skeletons that buff allies, and it also summons the boss Evil Ash, which himself can summon up skeletons, resurrect them, and also drain life. So I think it's important to reiterate, there's a clear difference in the gameplay style and what you're doing as a survivor or a demon player. When you play a survivor, you are an individual character. You're in the world, you're looting, you're interacting with the undead. But when you're a demon player, you are a ghost more or less flying around summoning things controlling the battlefield but also able to summon a boss and control the boss or even just control some of the basic enemy types or the elite enemy types which both of which you can also summon in a couple other major things i want to touch on first let's talk about progression there are going to be two forms of progression in the game first there is the in match progression so for the survivor side you'll collect this resource called pink f while looting and this gives you points that you can spend on increasing the effect 
effectiveness of your melee, your ranged, your health, your fear management, your stamina management, or your shields. But this is specifically exclusive to the match. Demons also have something like this. It's called Infernal Points. They can use them to boost up their infernal energy, their possession skills, their summons, their demon vision, or their traps. But both of those are just specific to the match. Every match, you'll start with zero, you'll collect points, and you'll upgrade these things, making you stronger for that match. There's also much longer term progression outside of the match. Every single survivor and demon class have their own specific skill tree. So as playing a character, you will level them up, giving you points to spend and further enhancing your various skills, your active ability, your passive, the talents you have access to. You can just get stronger. The more you play a character, a survivor, or the more you play a specific demon class, the stronger these will get. So this is going to let players really focus on what they like or try out different things, leveling them up individually. As I mentioned, looting is a thing. It's going to play a big role in this game. There are a variety of different types of weapons, different guns like pistols, rifles, and shotguns, different melee weapons like chainsaws, axes, shovels, knives, etc. And these weapons will have different rarities. Yes, there will be like legendary items that have higher stats than some basic common items. So the looting plays a big role in everything else that you're doing as a survivor. Now, I mentioned that fear is a really big aspect here as well. I want to provide a bit more detail. So for the survivors, their fear level will be raising throughout the match due to all sorts of things, engaging with different enemies, getting struck by a fear bomb, essentially a jump scare from the demon player or walking into one of their fear traps. Many, many things that happen during a match will raise your fear, but you will need to try to manage your fear because as your fear level raises, there are some negative side effects, like you get reduced vision and impaired movement. But if your fear level gets high enough, as I touched on, the demon player can possess you directly. And obviously that is very bad. That is going to likely very screw up you and your team. So survivors can lower their fear levels by doing things like performing finishing moves. These are basically executions on deadites with low balance or health, or they can also stand by campfires or other light sources. There'll be campfires all around the map and you'll use matches to light them, which will really lower your fear level. And I want to say once more as well, the map by all accounts is very, very large. It contains various locations and different points of interest where you will spawn in or the collectible objects will be found or the final boss will be. Cosmetics are definitely going to be a thing. I've heard that these will be unlocked via progression, different skins for the various characters. I also am going to assume that there are likely to be selling skins as well. The main reason leading me to believe this is that there are, are already two pre-order exclusive skins. And typically, if a game will have like pre-order exclusives, they will also have other purchasable exclusives because that's kind of what that is. We don't know for sure yet though. We'll have to see when it officially launches. And just the other day, there was a Q&A which touched on a few interesting points that I just want to relay to you here. They were asked what the game would have in terms of replayability to which the developer said, replayability will come through the interactions with the world as well as character progression. So what they mean by that is that the core objective of the game, the primary game mode, is the same for now. You're going to start off looking for the map pages, then finding the pages of the book and the dagger, and then banishing the dark ones. But the locations of all of that is constantly going to vary. It will be changing where the map pieces are, where the dagger and the Necronomicon is, where the dark ones are spawning, and that variety, as well as the variety of the demon hordes that are coming against you, depending on the demon player and what they summon in and what category they picked. All of that is going to create these emergent uh, situations and this emergent gameplay that mixes it up. But also replayability will come through character progression. As we touched on, players will level up and improve the individual characters that they play. And in terms of single player options, so people who might want to play this game single player, are there going to be bots? got some good news for you. So you can play the core experience as four real player survivors versus one real player demon player. However, you can also play by yourself with AI allies against an AI demon. Or if you want to play with your friends as real people survivors against an AI demon, you can do that as well. So they're going to have this mixing and matching solo, solo with AI or just full on multiplayer or four player or whatever number of players co-op versus an AI demon. I think that's really, really good for people who don't want to uh, deal with playing multiplayer. Some people don't like it. They just like co-op experiences. You will have that. I suppose the biggest question is, are there going to be different AI difficulties? How strong is that AI demon player? How good are those AI ally bots? 
We'll have to see when this thing comes out. Speaking of which, Evil Dead the game is launching very soon on Friday, May 13th. It is priced at $39.99 and will be coming to PC via Epic. It is not available on Steam and it's also coming to both Xbox and PlayStation consoles. And that is basically it. All of the details and information, everything you need to know before you play Evil Dead the game. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm excited to jump in and check this one out. I've been keeping my eye on it and it looks surprisingly good for like... Usually you don't expect much for a movie tie-in video game, you know what I mean? But I'm really liking what I've seen from all of this preview footage here. So we'll have to see very soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one, all right? Take it easy.